transportation allows us to live our lives the way we do our wonderful lives the way we do that people in the third world can see on TV but have no hope of sustainably being able to do that for themselves and their kids when we point the finger at BP three fingers point back at me it's my responsibility it's my problem it's my mess funded by my money that goes into my gas tank it's our problem there is nobody sadder about this spill than the management the shareholders and the employees of British Petroleum I'm going to buy fuel at British Petroleum gas stations to help support cleaning up my mess Meanwhile, I'm doing something to try to prevent this mess. We are doing something. We are a consortium of 75 people now. It's an open consortium that's growing rapidly. It's web-based, ET3.com Inc. And what we have is a new form of transportation that we could get from here in Fort Lauderdale area to New York City in 20 minutes at a tenth of the cost of flying. Evacuated tube transport is literally space travel on Earth. Removing 99.999% of the friction associated with transportation. It's well proven, it's the foundation of science in fact, that the ancients observed that we're not on a flat world but the earth revolves around the sun. All of us, our whole lives, have been traveling through the evacuated environment of space at 67,000 miles per hour as the earth travels around the sun. As the sun travels around the Milky Way at 200,000 miles per hour, therefore once per year we accelerate from approximately 130,000 miles an hour up to 260,000 miles an hour once per year. Travel in an evacuated environment of space is the most proven form of transportation in the universe. Just like the Wright brothers could look up and see the birds flying and realize that it's scientific principles allowing them to do that, we can look up and see the moon orbiting the earth and realize that that perpetual motion is already proven in nature and that we have the technology and the ability and we've already made billions of dollars worth of investment to build the capacity to build a new form of transportation that's literally space travel on earth. If you can visualize two tubes down a right of way along 95, all the air removed from the tubes, car sized magnetically levitated vehicles operating in the tubes, just like packets of information through the internet. When they accelerate up to speed, they merge into the flow of vehicles in the tube and coast for 95% of the journey they're coasting using no additional energy traveling through the space travel conditions that are recreated in that tube magnetically levitated to eliminate the rolling resistance the aerodynamic friction is eliminated by evacuating the path of travel very very simple compared to our transportation now it is true that maglev trains are just too expensive trains are just too expensive if trains were so wonderful, if electric trains were so wonderful, why didn't trains maintain their market share that they had in 1910? In 1910, 90% of Americans traveled between cities by train. Now it's less than 1%. The reason is, trains have already been proven to be unsustainable compared to the automobile and the aircraft. Much less lower benefit to cost ratio. 
automobile and aircraft have a much higher benefit to cost ratio. So how can we displace automobiles and aircraft? We can do it through market force. All paradigm shifts in transportation, if you study it, have taken place in the private sector for profit, and in most cases have been resisted by government. The Wright brothers thought that the military would be a good customer for aircraft. And if you look at the military budgets now, they were absolutely correct. But the person in charge of the military procurement at the time said mules are working for us just fine as far as transportation goes. I can see no practical military purpose for aircraft. Government resists change. Government is the status quo. Government is the way things are. If we want to change things, we have the responsibility of doing it ourselves. The three fingers, when we point at government, the three fingers are pointing back at us. We are the government. We are change. Private industry is most of the economy in our free country. And we have the power to do something about it. Our company is an open consortium because we recognize that almost everything exists right now to build evacuated tube transport. There is capacity to build tubes and pipelines all over the world with automated production equipment. Vacuum pumps, off-the-shelf technologies. A 400-pound vehicle, a capsule, a pressurized capsule, weighs only 400 pounds empty, yet can haul the same 800-pound payload as the average automobile. It's just like a freeway philosophy, it's not a train philosophy. These car-sized vehicles can be independently routed eventually through a network. If you're levitating a 100-ton train locomotive, the magnet expense is horrific. The guideway expense to hold those vehicles up in the air on a bridge span, because they're traveling 300 miles an hour, they cannot be at grade, because people won't even see them coming. The accidents all over the place. So they have to be elevated. The amount of materials to hold up a 100 ton locomotive is huge compared to the amount of materials required to hold up a vehicle that weighs 1,200 pounds fully loaded. That very, very, very expensive infrastructure to hold up trains up in the air is can only accommodate one train every five or ten minutes. So that horrifically expensive infrastructure is limited by capacity by a moving switch that switches the vehicle from one path to another. Evacuated tube transport uses a freeway philosophy, an automotive philosophy, where car-sized vehicles control the switching. The tube infrastructure is totally passive does not require on a mechanical switch. So with automation techniques that are already proven in telecommunications and the internet that allow packets of information to be routed through the internet at close to the speed of light, talk about some impressive switching technology. Automation is already proven in all kinds of industries. We can automate transportation to have much, much higher capacity. A five-foot diameter tube has the potential at a design speed of only 350 miles an hour, and this can extend up to 4,000 miles an hour. But at 350 miles an hour, that's 500 feet per second. If you have a 50-foot spacing between each capsule, which would allow these 16-foot capsules, two of them to merge in between any two in the system, a three-to-one safety factor, if we maintain at least a 50-foot spacing, 500 feet per second, 50 foot spacing, that means at 350 miles an hour, one 5 foot diameter tube can accommodate 10 vehicles per second. The safe capacity of a freeway traffic lane is one vehicle every two seconds. Our open consortium, therefore a 5 foot uh, allows anybody to leverage whatever skills that they have, whatever assets that they have, whatever production capacity that they have to help bring about a new paradigm shift in transportation. Give the name again? ET3.com. Thank you. I, I've got some cards.